Next, a Massachusetts lawmaker is proudly defending her decision to try to sabotage ICE by warning illegal aliens of impending immigration raids. She wouldn't return our calls, so instead we'll talk to another Massachusetts lawmaker who says she did exactly the right thing. That's next. It clearly makes their own cities less safe. That was Attorney General Jeff Sessions on the O'Reilly Factor talking about the administration's crackdown on sanctuary cities. Meanwhile, in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, State Representative Michelle Dubois says she has no regrets about trying to help sabotage the enforcement of federal immigration law. On Tuesday of this week, she posted rumors that ICE was going to conduct raids in Brockton, Mass, and urged illegals to go into hiding. Her fellow Democrats aren't exactly racing to defend the rule of law. Jimmy Eldridge is a Massachusetts state senator. He supports Representative Dubois' efforts and is himself trying to make Massachusetts a sanctuary state for illegal immigrants. Senator Eldridge joins us tonight. Senator, thanks for coming on. Doctor, so, thanks for having me on. So you'd like to see the state of Massachusetts vote to make the Commonwealth uh, a sanctuary for people here illegally, which seems to me legitimate. You know, voting on things, making laws, great. If you're able to do that, how would you feel if a sheriff in Massachusetts encouraged people to ignore the law that you passed? Do you think he should be punished for doing that? I, I don't know if they should be punished. I, I think when, we, when we're talking about Representative Dubois, look, she was looking out for the best interests of her entire community. We know that uh, these ICE raids have been incredibly destabilized to communities. They actually cause uh, immigrants, whether legal or undocumented, to have less trust in calling the police about a crime. So she was really looking out for the best interest of all of her constituents, including the immigrants in her district. Okay. And, you know, that's why we filed the Safe Communities Act to limit uh, police interaction with ICE raids. Right. I, I, I get all that. I've heard all that a lot. I mean, there's no social science to suggest that any of this makes this community safer. But whatever. The point is... No, no, there is. is there, it, there's uh, studies that say that sanctuary cities are safer. There is. They are safer, but not because they're sanctuary cities. There's no proof of that. But here's the, here's the point. Is it a little weird for lawmakers to be encouraging people to ignore the law? Well, look, we all have different approaches as legislators. You know, in, in the district I represent, when we've heard rumors about ICE raids, what I've done is reached out to the police uh, so they can reach out and check with ICE agents to see if this is happening. Because, you know, with the, the disturbing Trump, in my opinion, xenophobic policies of ICE deportations, making everyone a priority for deportation if you're undocumented, we need some limits at the state level with our taxpayer dollars, with our state and local police, not only because it will make communities more safe, but it's also something uh, that, will, that will limit the fear that many immigrant communities are, feel, okay. are feeling right now. But, but, I mean, let's, can we just be real? You, you do this for a living. You know how this works. Trump didn't write these laws. He didn't pass these laws. He's not a legislator. He's not a lawmaker. He's enforcing laws that are on the books that were passed with a lot of Democrats voting for them. So what he's saying is... But with some is, very disturbing executive orders. I mean, okay, I mean talk okay, about okay. executive but, but orders the, prioritizing the, everyone on, for deportation. The, the basic immigration law is clear to everyone who lives here, which is there's a process by which you get to come here, you get a green card, you get a visa of some kind, and if you don't have that, you're not allowed to be here. That's the law. It was passed by Congress. It's been that way for 240 years. Nothing to do with Trump. And so my question is, do lawmakers get to decide which legitimately passed laws they're going to try to subvert or not? Can you kind of see the problem here? Well, I, I disagree, Tucker, because we're talking about state resources, uh, local and police law enforcement. And we, yes, at the state level, we get to make decisions about what level of cooperation we have. Uh, with federal policies, uh, with federal actions like ICE agents. So that's, that's no, the law we're, no, you, line we're no, drawing. You don't. It's about federalism. No, because it's not about, it's not about federalism. Here you had a state lawmaker encouraging people to violate the law and doing so explicitly on social media. How would you, and it's, this is a sincere question, I'm not attacking you, how would you feel mm -hmm. if, uh, if the governor of Massachusetts decided that you know, we don't have to pay federal income taxes because, you know, they're bad and they cost Massachusetts a lot of money. Would you be in favor of that? Should governors or state lawmakers be able to decide that? Or how about federal gun laws? How would you feel about that if the governor said, I'm not enforcing federal gun laws? Is that legitimate, too? Well, if you're talking about state income taxes, not, not, not at all or any taxes, what I'm talking about is we have a federal 
immigration policy, which is broken. I mean, we need immigration reform, uh, but Republicans in Congress won't pass it. So at the state level, what is the best use of resources? And we've had police chief after police chief in Massachusetts talk about the fact that they would rather direct the resources towards violent criminals, uh, whether those who okay. are undocumented but, okay, or whether those who are U.S. I'm citizens. Sorry, I don't want to interrupt you, but you're not engaging my question at all. So let's say, again, I'm going to ask you the first question one more time to see if you will answer it. If you were to pass laws in the state of Massachusetts to make it a, a sanctuary state, and there was a sheriff somewhere who felt like subverting those laws, doing what you are doing to the feds, but to the state of Massachusetts, would you support his right to do that? I, I wouldn't support that because under our bill, we would prohibit oh. sheriffs from collaborating with ICE agents. So that's part of the bill. And again, it's, <laughs> okay. it's important to talk about well, you're these, these families that are... You're prohibited from encouraging people to break the law, but you're doing it anyway because you feel like it and you think you're righteous in doing it. But you don't want to let other people make the same moral decisions that you're making, exercise their freedom of conscience? Because why? Except, Tucker, law officials the other day have to follow state laws. And what we're saying is... How is the best use of state resources? Is it okay. the best use of taxpayer resources to target hardworking families in their okay. communities, you giving don't see back, the principle all, uh, providing obviously. a benefit to the Commonwealth of Massachusetts? Okay, well, speaking of hardworking families, I don't think that's a good families, use of taxpayer dollars. Okay, so you're from Acton. I know, I know your state well. So you're from Acton, and mm -hmm. down in Worcester, which is pretty like a half an hour away. It's pretty close. There was a teacher's aide last month who was murdered. She was strangled in her apartment by a man that we now know last week is an illegal alien. Now, you spent a lot mm -hmm. of time talking about how to you know, protect these families, these vulnerable immigrants. How much time have you spent thinking about how to protect people like that woman and her family? What would you say to her family now that she's dead? Yeah, well, first of all, Wor Worcester is, is, is not too far away from my district. I feel horrible for the family. And it's important to remember in reading the facts about what, what, how they found Mr. Melendez is that it was local police, it was the district attorney with DNA evidence. ICE agents were not at all involved in uh, catching this person. Uh, it, was, it was a case of old police work uh, that was able to capture this person. I get it, but and, he shouldn't have been here and, in and the I, first place. I mean, as you know, he, it was illegal for him to be here. There's no dispute on that. He was an illegal alien. If he hadn't been here, he wouldn't have murdered this woman. So encouraging him to stay here, I'm not accusing you of complicity in her murder, but I'm just saying you can kind of see the connection here as a human being, can't you? Like, what would you say to her parents? Well, I, Sorry? I, I think, where, I think where, I, where, you're making, where I disagree with you is that if we just have a broad brush against all undocumented immigrants, you're, you're not really creating the trust that allows immigrant communities or anyone in a community from feeling comfortable to call the police if they see a crime in okay. their neighborhood, I've, in their I've community. I've heard that talking point. Last question. Who should be deported? we got 11 million odd, maybe more, uh, illegal aliens here in America. Do all of them have the moral right to stay here? Who should we deport now? Well, we, we've had you know past past administrations like the Reagan administration that did immigration reform that legalized undocumented immigrants. Well, what do you I think? think I that mean, should we deport undocumented any undocumented immigrants? Undocumented immigrants who have a violent criminal history, who've committed a violent act, they should be deported. I think that's common sense, and I think people agree with that. But a broad brush, as President Trump's executive orders has done, that prioritizes all undocumented immigrants, including very hardworking families. I think that's outrageous. I think it's xenophobic, and I think it's deeply disturbing. Xenophobic. All right. Senator, thanks for coming on tonight. I appreciate it.